general overview of the flight engineer pipeline, you start off at Lackland Air Force Base and you go through aircrew fundamentals, which is a basic how to be an aircrew. And then you go to basic flight engineer, which is at Lackland. And then you go to SEER, which is survival training, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. After that, you'll go on to your airframe specific initial qualification. After that, you'll have a, a mission qualification phase and then progress and move on with your unit and fly. I think what new students find most rewarding about the flight engineer course is the end result. It is when you get to put on a flight suit, zip it up, grab your helmet bag, get off the bus, and you're standing in front of a 250 foot long airplane that you are going to operate and you are going to make sure safely moves through its mission. That end goal is what keeps a student motivated to finish up this course and get through it and do well in it. For me, when I first started the pipeline, I didn't realize how long it would take to be flying. And then I was flying and I was on my own and I was terrified. You don't have your instructor behind you telling you, helping you with your systems. And it's an awesome feeling. It builds your self-confidence. It's also a little scary in the beginning. <laughs> The content areas that students struggle the most with is going to vary by what point in the pipeline they're in. So when you're going through the fundamentals portion, it's just retention of the information they give you. When you're going through the FEIQ or initial qualification portion for your airframe, it's uh, grasping the, the varying systems and uh, the knowledge for those. And then when you get to the flying portion, it's the ability to take all this abstract information that people have crammed in your head for the last 18 months and put it to use and effectively getting the task assigned to you done. One of the few things that uh, students have a difficult time mastering is aviation weather. There's a little bit more that goes into knowing about the science behind thunderstorms and precipitation and winds and the effect of winds on the aircraft. So I think an area that a lot of students tend to struggle with is actual performance and calculations and what you need to be able to hand the pilots a flight engineer actually formulates all of the takeoff and landing data for the aircraft. You need to know how fast it's going to be able to take off, how much runway it's going to take to take off, how much runway it's going to take to land, how fast it's going to be able to climb. These are numbers that you have to be able to confidently hand to the pilot, not only because that's going to make sure the airplane does what it's supposed to do, but you're on the airplane too. So you don't want to hand them bad numbers and end up in a bad situation. One skill that I know that is essential to succeed in this job is self-study. To continue to stay in the books when that instructor is no longer looking over your shoulder after you're initially qualified, because people are depending on you to know the operational procedures associated with flying that aircraft. I think your best chance for successfully completing the flight engineer training course is to put everything into it. You have to really want it. It's going to seem like it's going on forever, and it's going to seem like they're never going to turn the fire hose off for how much information they're giving to you. You have to be able to stay motivated. You have to be able to look up from your book and look out the window every once in a while and see that humongous airplane taking off. You need to be able to keep your mind locked on to that ultimate goal of being able to be a flight engineer.